Hi, I'm Mike Dano, and we're here at the big cable next-gen show in Denver. Uh, the weather outside is absolutely perfect, but of course a storm is coming uh, later this afternoon, uh, so we're all going to uh, finish up our show here and, and quickly head out to where we're headed. But before that happens, I'm here with Eric from GCI. Eric, thanks for joining us today. And uh, I wondered if you could just uh, give us a, a sense of what the GCI network looks like today because you've got a lot of operations out uh, in Alaska right now. We do. Yeah. Um, there's almost a technology that we don't like to have in the network <laughs> at this point. Um, yeah, so GCI is a is an MSO and an, an, as well as a wireless operator. So we have uh, HFC plants, we have uh, fiber, uh, fiber to the home, we have DSL, uh, we have uh, different flavors of Wi-Fi and and uh, other sorts of broadband technologies deployed, as well as 5G wireless, LTE, 3G, and 2G. Uh, so we have a lot of different technologies. We uh, we have satellite uh, satellite based customers as well in locations where we don't have plant, uh, as well as uh, an extensive microwave network uh, for uh, middle mile and backhaul. Is there any type of wi of network technology that you don't have in in the network? I, I actually can't think of anything I, right I would now. Be that hard, you... I'd be hard <laughs> pressed to come up with one, and we certainly have. Um, uh, an affinity for all various types of telecommunications technology, and I think you know maybe to our detriment, we also uh, haven't uh, effectively life cycled some of the stuff that mm. we should be life cycling. So there's a there's a whole plethora of things that we support and operate today. So yeah, let's say a healthy network operation. We very Put much have way. a healthy <laughs> network operation. Um, okay, so we're here at the at the Cable Next Gen show, um, and you are right in the middle of some major uh, cable upgrades in, in your network in Alaska right now. So. Talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. So we're taking our uh, our one gigahertz network that we have deployed in, in our urban locations and in the process of upgrading that to high split. And uh, it's a big project. Mm. We've got our, our first node cut in already in Anchorage uh, and uh, really uh, moving to uh, having that node active with customers on it next week. So that's, that's great. We also deployed our MDs in Nome and Kotzebue about a year and a half ago. And uh, that, that network's... Uh, one of the first uh, RMD deployments in the United States, uh, and it's working fantastic. We've got, I think, 17 of those in place, round numbers anyway, uh, operating currently in, around the state. Uh, our high split deployment is going to be focused right now on RPDs, and uh, uh, we'll eventually transition to RMDs when we have uh, Layer 2 uh, availability, but right now uh, those are operating as Layer 3, which isn't really scalable for us. Mm. Um, but lots of lots of lots of growth happening. Uh, big program targeting this year. I think we're going to be looking at doing about 50 high split nodes between Anchorage and Fairbanks. Um, it'll give us a, a really good understanding of of how high split performs and all of the great improvements that come with that. Okay. And uh, can you talk about either the vendors for that, or the you know the cost per home passed, or the speeds that customers might be receiving through the through that change? So our, our speeds, our, our plan speeds today are, are, are two gigs down, mm. and that's our top tier plan. We're going to be looking at moving that uh, to a, a higher a higher plan speed here very soon. Uh, this is all part of our strategy to move to ten gigs uh, over the next three years or so, and that speed will be available to, in in all of our urban locations. Uh, which are continuing to expand and grow. So not only high split, but we're also deploying a lot of fiber to the home uh, using our EPON platform, and especially in rural communities. Um, our latest being uh, the, the uh, Aleutian Islands area, uh, Unalaska, Dutch Harbor uh, is now uh, all fiber to the home and uh, operating the same plant speeds, the same plant speeds that we have available in our urban locations. So the two gig plans are available to customers down there. Uh, so yeah, a lot of a lot of growth, a lot of a lot of really big building projects occurring right now. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so last question. Here's the bonus round. Okay. Question for you um, is that so we're here at the Cable Next Gen show, mm -hmm. um, but especially in the last year or two, there's been a lot of talk about convergence among different networking technologies. Um, we've seen cable operators get into the mobile business. We've seen mobile network operators get into the the business of in-home internet with their fixed wireless offerings. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've got fiber builders that are building all over the place, uh, yourself included. Um, and so there's been a lot of talk about like, you know, how are all these networks going to potentially work together? Could a cable provider acquire a wireless provider in order to offer a converged service? Um, so from your perspective, like you are operating a lot of these yeah. different kinds of networks. So like what is your view on that, 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 the idea of convergence, particularly from a networking perspective? From a networking perspective, there's a lot of benefit in combining the middle mile, the last mile, 
Uh, we already do that today. Uh, we operate a conversion network because we are also a wireless provider. Right. Um, for, for us, um, we are leveraging CPE that offers both both kinds of services. So not only is uh, a CPE a, a cable modem, but it also can be a fixed wireless device uh, for, for backup. So really is a, an interesting space right now where we can fully leverage um, the, the, uh, the benefits for converging technologies where it makes sense for an operator of GCI size. Uh, and I think that we're, we're well on the path to looking at you know, just how far can we push the convergence. You know, we've, we've got converged provisioning, uh, the, the middle mile, the last mile, our CPE, and, and starting to look at other, other platforms where it may make sense to converge. Uh, we have our IPTV offering, which is converged already uh, in, in terms of a subscription base. So. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of really interesting things uh, on the horizon um, that we're still working through. Hmm. Yeah, super interesting. Well, Eric, I'm glad we had this conversation. This is really good. Thanks very much for having me. Thank you, Mike. Eric. I appreciate it. Thanks. Take care.